Hey guys, I'm Dan. And I'm Lisa. Thanks for tuning in to the Always on Liberty channel. Today, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about Northwest Nebraska and some excursions we recently took. So make sure you stay tuned and we'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. This past summer, we returned to a part of the country that we totally enjoy and uh, we've fallen in love with. It actually started uh, way back when we were motorcycle nomads that we happened upon Northwest Nebraska. Now when you think of Nebraska, what do you think about Dan? People think of cornfields, they think of Interstate 80, they think of flat, they think of nothing to really see. The flyover state. But that's not true. No. Um, back when we were motorcycle nomads, we had found Scott's Bluff and Chimney Rock and Jail House and Courthouse Rocks. We even found Lake Minotary um, and all these little places, Wildcat State Park. Beautiful we, places. Beautiful places. And when we were on the motorcycles, we uh, found the Sand Hills. And it was absolutely amazing. If I were to describe it, it was like riding on a very, very billowy quilt. It was just gentle and beautiful roads and um, it, it was just amazing. Well, anyway, in our journey, uh, we keep going back to Northwestern Nebraska. Now, aside from the uh, beautiful roads out there, we had found that it's also very historic and it has a geological significance. Now first, our stop was at Fort Robinson State Park. I'm gonna let Dan tell you a little bit about how uh, that is historic. Fort Robinson was a U.S. Cavalry post for years, and it was the site of the last battle between Indians and the U.S. Cavalry in 1879. There were Native Americans who were kind of imprisoned at Fort Robinson because they had left the reservation. They uh, were part of what was called the Cheyenne Outbreak, where the Braves hit a few rifles in the barracks where they were being kept. And they started this battle between themselves and U.S. Cavalry because they were determined not to go back to the reservation. They would rather die in their hunting grounds in their home. So Fort Robinson has a tremendous amount of history. Some of the original buildings are still there. There, you, there's an equestrian area there. There's a lot of things that just really would pique your interest. It is the site of Crazy Horse's assassination. Uh, Crazy Horse is supposedly buried somewhere in a local area, but nobody really knows where his body is today. But there's just a tremendous amount of history that really goes with the scenic beauty of the area. Now, when we were there, um, actually, Fort Robinson State Park, we stayed there in our toy hauler in our first year of our RV uh, adventures. So um, we're gonna tell you a little bit about the, the state park uh, in recreation and camping. There are actually two campgrounds um, on the state park. What I do wanna tell you is when you enter the state park, you have to stop at the office first. You yeah. can make a reservation through the uh, internet. I think it's either Reserve America or so. one of those. Anyway, um, so you go to the entrance and you stop at the registration office. Mm -hmm. I do have to tell you, it is expensive for being a state park. You have to pay uh, a registration fee for yeah. the state. Yes, they okay. have a they have a, an a entrance fee. An entrance fee that be, that you pay as a non Nebraska resident. And then you have your campground fees and being a big rig. Uh, it was pretty expensive because mm -hmm. you're limited on which sites you can be at. Yes. Now, the downside of it, it was electric only. Yeah, it's not a full hookup. No. It's, it's electric only. There is no sewage. No there is a water. dump station. And, you, and there is no water hookup. So when you go to Fort Robinson, make sure you stop and fill your water up, you know, at the Pablo Water Station on your way in. Right. Or bring it with you because it is not a true full hookup. Not only that, but um, in our honest opinion, the um, the bathrooms were not in good shape uh, they, they were not the cleanest they were fair yeah. they were fair at best yeah so um, let's talk about recreation real quick and then we're gonna move on to some other things we did in the uh, area up there in Northwest Nebraska it um, being a state park 
it does have free range bison. We did see on the way um, into the park. Uh, they had Jeep Ride. Yep, you can go to Jeep Ride, they take you up to the top of a bluff and they explain the local topography to you and stuff. That's pretty entertaining. It, it's it's pretty neat. The driver's he's a pretty good driver, that's for sure. Yep. You can also pay to get tickets for a wagon ride mm -hmm. uh, throughout the, the state park in the barracks areas and you get a really great historic documentation. Mm -hmm. remember this they even had a horse hospital they did do you remember that yep um and you go inside the hospital and they have this big huge table where they used to put the army horses on to tend to their medical needs and um it was funny because there was this huge skylight that you know back then they didn't have electricity no. in these big operating room lights so that was kind of peculiar um, there are some hiking trails. Yeah, there are a few hiking trails, some bicycling trails and things like that. Yep, and it is also an equestrian park. So yes. if you do have horses, you can park on the equestrian side and um, they have the corrals and the, the boarding and all that. They do some musicals there. They, yeah. they, they, they have a little opera house or a little playhouse. They do some musicals and stuff like that. And there is one thing that's unique as a state park. There is a restaurant slant bar cafe. Yes. It had pretty good food and stuff like that at it. Yeah. So that's something to think about it. There's no reason to leave the state park if you really don't want to. Right. Right. They had a decent camp store. They did. Um, lots of souvenirs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I, I didn't see very much, you know, bread and milk and all that. No. Um, but there is Wi-Fi yes. in the restaurant. Um, we really didn't pay attention to Wi-Fi um, because when we were there, we took a break. Sure. We, we had to take a break. So we kind of unplugged. We can't um, give you an honest assessment of the Wi-Fi. We learned of a, a pretty awesome place called Toadstool Geological Park. And it's about what, 10, 20, mi 20 miles? I'd say about 20 miles from Fort Robertson from the state park itself. And how we found this actually is when we were on a motorcycle ride, we were going, uh, riding to South Dakota, which is really literally, you know, 30 miles down the road. It is. Across the border. And um, we saw this little brown sign um, and it said Toadstool Geological Park. Well, we said we'd go back. Well, we did go back. We went back twice, as a matter of fact, the first time uh, in our first year. And there is lots of beautiful hiking. But first of all, let's talk about the campground. It is uh, six sites. They're uh, primitive sites. Yes. We have to tell you, it is not big rig friendly. No, no, it's not. The sites are small. They're about 25, maybe 30 foot long. Right. They're primitive. There's no electrical hookup. There's no water anywhere out there. There's uh, two pit toilets and that's it. There's no, oh, there's trash pickup. There's trash pickup. Right, but, right. But other than that, there are, there are no amenities out there. Um, and each site does come with a picnic table. Yes. And a pavilion over the picnic table yes. for shade. Yes. Um, it, it is really, really well kept. They do a really great job of keeping the grass mowed down. Do. Um, we do have to tell you, it is windy out there. <laughs> it is, it's very windy and it's very buggy. Um, we did not really get to enjoy the full essence of the hiking and the outdoor experience because the mosquitoes and the biting flies were just horrendous right. this year. And we're attributing that to 
uh, the immense amount of rain Nebraska has had this year. Right. So your experience may be a little bit different. Anyway, when we entered the, uh, the park, um, it's a dirt road about 10 miles. Yes. You need to go slow. It is washboarded. Yeah. You will cross train tracks. A couple of times. Um, that are crowned. So you need to take it easy going over those. Um, but it is a very picturesque drive out there. It's just beautiful. And the closer you get, it's almost like you're landing on the moon because the topography just instantly changes from flat prairie green fields to these toadstool and uh, sandstone large mounds. Once we got parked, um, you do have to pay. Uh, they have a kiosk, informational kiosk. Yep. For us, it was 250 a day because we have a senior pass, but it's maintained by U.S. Forest Service, so they have a, a fee associated with it. It's not a lot, but it, it's something that helps them maintain the grounds and things like that. Now, we do have to tell you that we did notice a sign that it is going up it significantly is. in price because it does take a lot to manage and care for it um, the, and keep the trails clear and um, the, keep the grass cut yeah, and the yeah. toilets pumped and things like that. Yeah. Another really cool uh, feature is they had a sod house. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a little historical value out there that why that sod house is there. And, um, but they had amazing trails. So I'm going to tell you a little bit, why is it called Toadstool? Yeah, the, the main attraction really is the geologic formations that you get to hike to and that you get the experience right. that Lisa's going to tell you about. Well, the historical value first. Uh, the, the first visitors actually arrived in the 1800s. And they, um, they, they saw these giant stone mushrooms. It was the, the most oddest thing they've seen. And uh, they labeled them, uh, the slabs resting on their clay columns. Yep. And they named them toadstools. Uh, they're created by forces of wind and water eroding the soft clay faster than the sandstone rock that caps it. So, the erosion eventually collapses the giant toadstools while new ones are forming. So it's pretty interesting how that happens. Um, and then volcanoes in the west periodically blanketed this area with ash. So some of this uh, sandstone is mixed with volcanic ash. And the water in the rain, snow, uh, dissolved the ash and seeped into the cracks of the clay where it crystallized and the width of the cracks in the thickness of the gravel pieces as the clay eroded the hard minerals and bone fragments of long dead animals became exposed and there are fossils out there um, and i had even picked up in the wash on a trail i had picked up a bone fragment so we don't know how old that bone fragment was it could have been from the dinosaurs, or it could have been from a wolf. Or, could be Jimmy Hoffa. Or Bigfoot. <laughs> but anyway, um, there, there's a lot of interesting things. Now, uh, again, we did not get to really enjoy the full essence of the, the hiking because it was just, oh my God, the bugs were horrendous. It is really beautiful at night though. It's a, it's a very dark sky area and the, the stars are very pretty and things like that. It's quite quiet. There is a train that runs in the distance, but it's mm -hmm. nothing that's earth shattering. It's no different than any other town in the Midwest or any of the Midwestern area. It's really not a big deal for you. Yeah, it, oh my goodness. The, the sky is just so open. It was a dark sky. So if you are in, into astronomy or stargazing, that be. is the place to go. There's no lights for miles. No. And the other campers that were there, they were very respectful oh, yeah. of that. So do keep that in mind that you need to also, so others can enjoy it too. So they equated this, or even us, equate this to the Badlands of Nebraska. It's like, a, it's like a miniature Badlands, it's really neat. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, you could see the erosion happening every day. And even, as strangely as it sounds, even the five years that separated our visit, we noticed differences. Oh, there's, there's, so, there were definitely differences in five years. Yeah, so it's constantly changing. 
Um, we did see uh, some wildlife. We saw a hare. Um, they did say that it's big cat country. We did see we did fresh see tracks. Evidence. We did see tracks for big cats, so they are there. Yeah, and um, we heard the coyotes in the distance. And we did see a uh, snake. Yeah, we did see a snake. It was not a, a rattler. Or no, it wasn't anything. venomous. That was like a corn snake. Or yeah, something. but it was enough to scare me out of my pants. And so, and if you if you pay attention to the ground, you can actually see some fossils sure. and and our our prehistoric past. So if you're going to northwestern Nebraska, put that on your list. It's an exciting place. You can take the kids. Just make sure you bring lots of bug spray um, and lots of water. There lots is no of water. potable water out there. There's no water out there at all. So you only have what you bring to hike with out there and spend your time. Right. And it is a 14 day limit. Yes. Um, so everybody gets a chance to visit it. And, um, you know, they do have information. They have these. Uh, uh, brochures that you can get right out of the box at the trailhead. Yes. Uh, I didn't see any trail maps, but it is kind of self-explanatory. They have trail markers on the trails and they have this really cool pamphlet and it's marked with numbers so you can tell what you're looking at sure. um, at each trail marker. And then um, they also had this really cool brochure. Um, and what I wanted to tell you is while you're in the neighborhood, you want to go to this place. It's the Hudson Main Bison Bone Bed. An active archaeological dig. Right, and this goes back to 10,000 years. So this is all within the same area. Right, all these bones were discovered by some local farmers and ranchers. And at first they thought they were sheep. But the closer they looked, they determined that they were North American bison. Mm -hmm. And they really haven't come up with a sound explanation as to why all these bison right. died there together. Right. But all their remains and their, their fossilized bones and stuff are all there. Right. But it's still an active search, an active geological or archaeological search. It's pretty cool. And you know, all this whole uh, western, northwestern Nebraska does have a lot of evidence of bison. Um, unfortunately, you don't see very many there. Uh, another thing we wanted to note at uh, the toadstool area is if it does threaten to rain, watch your weather. Yes. If it does threaten to rain, you need to get out of there because it has been known that the, the uh, road washes out yeah. to tune into your weather. So, um, and then uh, let's see, what else did we do there? We found this little town not too far. It's kind of actually in between Fort Robinson and Toadstool itself. It was called Crawford. And Crawford's a small town. It's got a little annual rodeo. It's got yep. some history involved with it and things like that. But they had a really nice small city park that I think had four electric water hookups. Yep, no yep. sewage, but a dump station on site. But they had four 50 amp or 30 amp hookups with water, with fresh potable water, and a very nicely kept small city park, uh, big enough you could probably put a fairly good sized RV in there. You could probably put a 35, no yeah. more than 35. I would say about 35, 36 foot, um, but it was really nice. It was centrally located so you could walk into town. There are a couple restaurants mm -hmm. in town, a couple bars, a small grocery store, yeah. a post office, a small library. It was just a really nice community. It was very, 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 very unique for us. It's an old community, and believe it or not, it's where Red Cloud uh, from the, remember the Cheyenne Outbreak Dan was talking about um, with the Fort Robinson, so this whole area was pretty significant. Now about the camping at this place, um, first we do have to tell you, uh, it's on the railroad tracks. Yeah, uh, like everything in else in the that, Midwest, there yeah. are, there's a railroad, and this one is fairly close to you. Yes, yes, and they do blow their whistles, so yes. it, it's kind of hilarious in our history of traveling. It never fails, we're by the railroad tracks. But anyway, um, when you go there, uh, there are two entrances. Yes. One entrance, you cannot go if you're over a certain weight, and it tells you that. There, there's a five-ton weight limit. There's a new bridge that comes in by the Via, yes. or by the American Legion, and that's a five-ton weight limit. But there is a second entrance that has no bridges or anything, so you could take a, a heavier vehicle. 
through that okay. way. It also is a, a family picnic area. They have pavilions. They do have a bathhouse. Um, in my opinion, the bathhouse wasn't taken care of at all. Um, so, but that's why we have a bathroom in our RV. There you go. It used to be a fishery. Yes. Okay. Um, but it's it's been disbanded, and so the the city of Crawford has taken over this. And they uh, have a little, right before you get to the campground, they have a little mailbox. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to pay yep. because, you know, that's what uh, takes care of the maintenance and sure. uh, landscaping and that. You fill it out and inside there's a card that you put um, in your dash. How much was it? I think it was $25 a night. It was more... It was a lot less than 20, Fort Robinson. It was $20 a night. It was a lot less than Fort Robinson itself. And it actually had water at the, you know, close to your site, so you could use the water and Electric stuff. Electric so, and water. So we thought it was a much better deal, to be honest with you, than yeah. staying at the state park. Now they did have some dry camping spots. They do. Um, away from the campground. We're not sure um, if you can camp overnight. I would assume if you were like a van or a small, small RV, you could, but I would not be toting a fifth wheel through there no. or even a travel trailer. So, um, geez, do we have anything else to tell about the area? Uh, the closest place you're going to be able to get groceries and things like that is going to be down in Shadron. Shadron's pretty good size. It's about 30 miles east of Crawford. Right. It had a Walmart and it had another grocery store, a Safeway, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So you can get most of what you need in the area. There is fuel in Crawford itself. And diesel. Uh, and diesel. The small grocery store in Crawford was was okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't... You just have to be careful because things are pretty dated there because yeah. it is such a small town. Right. But I mean, all in all, it's a very, very beautiful area. Um, it's probably neglected. People it probably is. drive right through to go to the Black Hills thinking, hey, there's nothing to see here. But there is a tremendous amount of history and there's a lot of scenic beauty right. in the northwestern corner of Nebraska. And Shadron also had a state park there. Shadron had a state park also, yes. Yeah. So um, I guess our, our message here is Nebraska's, it, it's so unique. It is not a flyover state. There's so much no. to do, especially in the northwest quadrant. Um, you know, there, it's, it's not cornfields. I think the message is get off those interstates, yes. get on some of these state roads. And back roads. Back roads. Talk to the locals, meet the characters in the, in the places that you're staying so you can learn the local history and yeah. experience the local life that, that this great country offers. So I guess um, we're, we're going to uh, close that with, with our message that, you know, you need to go off road. Exactly. We thank you for tuning in to our channel. Yes. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you later. Until then. Underway, underway is the, the only, only way. way. a video here and the freaking wind wants to blow that's not happening today see ya